My name is Jim Delosier, and this is the Survivor Truck. The idea behind the Survivor Truck was to build a vehicle that no one else had built yet, a combination of what everyone else had tried to do, to satisfy all those gaps that they just weren't able to cover. One of the things that I was really, really focused on was uh, all of the disaster services vehicles are extremely lacking when it comes to long-term deployment, where they can't get to the areas where the help is most sorely needed. This will basically go anywhere, and uh, it can take whatever terrain is, is there, and we'll still get to the target option. So we started with a medium duty truck. We took that, we uh, put an armored command center in it. We put a uh, living quarters in it. We put a utility bed in it. Uh, we combined all of that with some very sophisticated electronics and wiring. A lot of power, uh, a lot of amperage, a lot of batteries, uh, and able to sustain us for a long period of time, regardless of what's going on. We have a lot of technology on the survivor truck ruggedized technology. It has to survive when other things will fail. Inside this kit here we have a Tough Book 31. Very, very durable. It's uh, basically the heart of the kit. It's a command center in a box. This kit by itself can be a standalone command center in a fire or in a natural emergency or any sort of an event. But this is a redundant system so that you can put the vehicle in one place, you can put this in another vehicle or remotely in a camp. You can put that in another vehicle and then we have a series of these that we drop around that each has a camera attached to it that goes back to the Wi-Fi cloud and is monitored throughout these kits. One of the most important things about the Survivor Truck is the mobile technology. This is a Panasonic FZG1. With this I can control all of the cameras that I'm looking at uh, that are in the drop kits, in the command center. I can see what's in the cab. I can communicate with other people. I can monitor what's going on in the whole environment. Before we had something like this, you basically had to be with the equipment. You couldn't operate it remotely. But now because of the way that the, the technology is integrated with the tactical mesh, I can do everything that I can do in there, out there, which is hugely important. It's robust enough, the battery lasts all day. It's super strong and durable. When I'm out in the field, I can take this, I can literally throw it into my dump pouch and I know it's gonna be fine. Or I can toss it over there. If it falls out of my kit, no big deal. I pick it up and it still works. You just can't beat this thing. In an environment like this, austere environments, complex environments, where there's a lot of moving and shaking and running and dropping and all the stuff that's going on, any consumer device is definitely not gonna survive. There's no consumer device that has the computing power and the rugged, the durability, the battery life that this has. It just, you just can't accomplish it without something like this. The Survivor Truck is an extremely rugged, durable vehicle, and the, uh, the computing system had to be equally rugged and durable. And the Panasonic Toughpad and Toughbook solution was a perfect marriage for me because if I can get the vehicle there, it needs to do the job when it gets there. And the only electronic solution that seemed like it wouldn't do the job for me was the Panasonic. The Windows platform is important uh, for a number of reasons. One, uh, the encryption on it is, uh, is important. And two, it's the standard. If you're going to have interoperability of different systems, you just can't go off into one direction and then go in another direction, go in another direction. You have to stick with the standard. And the standard in this application is Windows. The technology, uh, being that it's robust and it's used by the military and law enforcement and fire, are all important to me because I don't know where this vehicle is going to go, whether it could be a warfighter or it could be in a fire, it could be a law enforcement or border patrol or humanitarian. There's no limit to the, the types of uh, engagements this vehicle can be caught up in, and it was really important to have a computing system that's going to be able to do what I needed to do every time I needed to do it. It doesn't do me any good if I show up and it doesn't work, so I need to make sure that when I get there, not only does it does the technology there, but it's robust and rugged enough to handle the situation, whatever it is.